Hey everybody, today is January 31st, 2020. If you followed my previous videos or one of the interviews I did with the Experimental Aircraft Channel, I talked a lot about using dual electronic ignition. In fact, I said I was going to go with the light speed dual electronic ignition and uh, well, a lot has changed. Uh, I'm, I'm going to Magneto's right now and let me tell you how that evolution occurred from all the way from electronic ignition to now going with full dual magnetos. Uh, after, you know, my, the conventional thought was the electronic ignition is going to be incredible. Uh, why not? Cars have it, boats have it, everything has it. Why haven't airplanes gotten up to speed yet? Well, it's not that they haven't, it's just that it's a little bit tricky and when you're in the experimental world, things still are experimental. So the light speed dual electronic ignition uh, after digging into it and seeing all that was required to, to install this system, but there are a lot of ancillary or what I, what I call satellite components that go with it. Uh, it. Beginning from the flywheel where you have to mount a sensor on the flywheel and to the case of the engine. Uh, there are coil packs that go on the top of the engine case. In my case there would be three coil packs. There are also ignition modules that need to be installed on the cold side of the firewall and preferably those modules have cooling like uh, fans and things like that blowing on them. If you saw my last video you saw my firewall and how, how crowded it is already. Um, I've, got, I've got voltage regulators on there and just the array of normal components that you put on a firewall and I just didn't feel like cramming anything more onto my firewall. And I wanted to get the build moving along too. After visiting Oshkosh 2019, I was impressed with uh, Surefly. Surefly came out with the uh, drop-in Magneto style of electronic ignition. Uh, PMAG has had that out for quite a while, but here's the, here's the difference. Uh, a lot of people tell me, hey, I've been using PMAG and Surefly for a long time. What's your problem? The problem is I have a six-cylinder and most people have four cylinders. They really haven't evolved enough for me to feel confident. I don't want to get into being the test pilot for a particular company because they just came out with a six cylinder version of an electronic ignition. So I called Champion Aerospace and talked to uh, Joe Logie, their, their Magneto expert at uh, Champion and talked about the slick mags. And I said, you know, I was considering electronic, dual electronic ignition. What do you suggest? He says, are you building a race plane? I said, no. Why do you want dual electronic ignition? I said, because I want, I want reliable starts. I want to be able to start when the engine's hot on one or two blades. Um, you know, a lot of people have problems when you have fuel injection, having that hot start situation where, the, where you just crank and crank and crank and crank. He introduced to me Sure Start Start Booster, which is a firewall mounted. So the start booster isolates the left magneto and it puts 25,000 volts to those plugs during the start. So you have a jumper on the start switch uh, that isolates the left mag. The booster kicks in, puts 25,000 volts to those plugs only. Right mag is not firing. When you release the start and it goes back to both, then both mags resume back to their normal six to 8,000 volts per side. Uh, so, you know, that was really good enough for me, just as long as I can get this thing fired up when it's hot, perfect. So here we are. So let's talk about the installation of the mags, um, because I really, again, this was an area I couldn't find a lot of detail, so I had, to, I had to do a lot of research, and I found information here, there, all over the place, internet. So if I can help somebody with the magneto installation on my limited experience, I'll just give you the overview, the big things that I encountered when I installed the magneto. So number one, the first thing you have to do is get your engine at top dead center, firing on cylinder number one. And that's just simply a matter of putting in the plugs on the bottom of all the cylinders, taking the plugs off the top, out of the top of the cylinders, and just rotating the prop with your thumb over the number one cylinder until you start to feel pressure on that compression stroke, wanting to push your thumb off that cylinder. The 
but that was pretty easy to do. Then after that, you back the prop up where it's marked on the flywheel to 25 degrees top dead center. The SkyTech starter actually has a little, uh, little dot or indentation on it that actually will, you can, if you're looking at the bottom of the flywheel, you'll see how it lines up with 25 degrees of top dead center. So I just leave the prop right there where that is, and now it's time for me to start with the mags. To attach the drive gear uh, onto the, the tapered shaft that's on the magneto, and you torque it down to about 120, 130 uh, inch pounds. There's a specific cotter pin that goes into that castellinated nut. Uh, and then from there, you attach the cushion, the cushion uh, drive mechanism with the bearing on the end. So after the drive gear is installed, it's now time to set the orientation or, or the rotation of the magneto exactly when it's going to fire on the number one cylinder. And if you look at the ID plate on the magneto, it's going to say left or right. And on the front of the mag, you'll see uh, two holes, one's left, one right. You turn, if it's left, I'm going to turn, which mine were, were left. You turn the drive gear until this pin pops in and, it's, and it sits on that second shoulder. And now it's, it's pretty much held in place. And then that's when you come along and that's when it's time to take the magneto and install it to the back of the case of the engine. And it just slides into the case. You have to maybe turn it a little bit and it'll finally go in. Um, once that's in place, all I had to do after that was in, install the two hold downs. They're like little shoulders that hold down on each side of the magneto, just finger tight. Now it's time to set the timing on the magneto. And I use a timing device like this one here, which really all it does is just tells me when the contacts are opening and closing. And so at the moment the contacts have closed, this thing beeps and tells me I've got the, I've got the mag set exactly where I need it to be. Now it's time to tighten down. It's now time to install the ignition harness plug wires. The plug wires are already built into the cap. So at first, it's a little confusing. The back of the cap really doesn't show you which way to go until you really look close at it. And you can see that there are three screws that are not evenly from apart from each other. And the way it was described to me from Champion was they made it mechanic proof. Well, it, it's not intuitive. You have to ask and then they tell you it'll line up. When all three screws go into the right holes, it's where it needs to be. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, great. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Now it's time to route the wires to their respective plugs, top and bottom. And what's nice is the wire harness has those already marked on the end. Screw on cap that goes into the, the spark plugs themselves. And those are marked specifically for exactly whether it's a bottom or top number of cylinder so if, if it's if it's the bottom five it'll say b5 on on that cap i've got everything champion champion uh slick mag champion sure start booster champion harness the only thing i didn't use champion was the plugs themselves i'm using the tempest fine wire long reach plugs everybody have asked about tempest they say they're fantastic so uh, the guy at Champion gave me a hard time about using Tempest plugs, but I said, hey. So plug wires are now installed. Everything looks good. Uh, plugs are installed. The Tempest plugs, everything's in place. Everything's looking good. So there's the ignition system.